coyote sightings are on the rise, so now's the right time to check in with our Jeffco Ranger, Marianne Bennell. Hi, Marianne. Hey, Happy New Year. I, you too. So I have to ask you because I say coyote, but my family, who's from Colorado and Oklahoma, they say coyotes. So what's the best way to say it? Either one is correct. Interestingly enough, it's a it's a word that has a, a Mexican Spanish origin, and either one is correct. So you can use. Which okay, well, I'm going to stick with coyote for today, okay? <laughs> okay? Why do we see coyote more in the winter? It's that time of year for them where they're entering into their breeding season. And so they tend to do a little bit more vocalizing and they spend a little bit more time policing and defending their territory. So it makes sense that we'd see and hear them more. It freaks me out if I'm lying in bed and I live in Castle Rock and I hear coyotes howl. Mm -hmm. Why do they howl? Howling is a social thing. So oh. a coyote that's in a family group, especially the males, will start off with a, a grand sort of opening howl. And then all the other coyotes that are in that family group will start to chime in. And interestingly enough, their, their vocalizations are so complex. And these howls and these gargles and yelps that they do, right. it may sound like you have 25 coyotes in your backyard and there's really only two or three. Really? Yeah, it's because crazy. Because I think it's like, I'm coming for you, ow! <laughs> I'm like, I hear you. But if you watch their body language as they're doing it, it's a very social, it's like two dogs greeting each other. There's a Isn't lot of really? roto wagging of the tail and they lick each other's faces and wow. it's a very sort of friendly social greeting thing. And they're very territorial, true? They are. Coyotes do not tolerate other coyotes that aren't in their family group in their oh. territory and that's the other reason why this time of year we need to be careful with our domestic dogs because of this. How can we identify a coyote? Well, actually, it's pretty interesting. People often mistake them for a domestic dog, but they actually, the, the pointed ears, the long pointed snout, and then particularly in this picture, you can see how they carry their tail. Mm -hmm. Unlike a domestic dog, that tail is carried lower than the spine, so down toward the body. And they even carry it that way as they're walking, which is very different from a domestic dog, which right. carries their tail up or in a wag or Is there a, a reason why they do that? It's just the way they hold their okay. tail. So this one's hunting right here. You can see the tail's up a little bit, but that's more um, as it's as it's hunting or exploring. But when they're just walking or running, that tail is down. Interesting. And I mentioned earlier, like, I'll hear them when mm -hmm. I'm in bed at night. Mm -hmm. How close are they? Are they a <laughs> mile away, or are they really in my backyard? Well, in the Denver metro area, anyone could have a coyote in their backyard at any time. So they have colonized the complete, their urban animals in many cases. This photo here shows you one that's just right outside of someone's driveway. So they are in urban areas and they can be in backyards depending on what sort of attractants are back there. Besides the howl, how can I tell if one's been in my backyard? Well, you can look for scat. So um, coyote scat is very different from domestic dog scat. This photo here I took at one of our parks at Crown Hill and you can see that the end of the scat has a little twist or mm -hmm. a little tip to little it. Curly cute. And if you look really carefully, you can see there's hair and teeth and seeds and things that a domestic dog wouldn't normally be eating. Yeah. So that's one way to tell. Um, you can look at scat and people who walk in our parks are often saying, hey, what's this poop in the middle of the trail? Don't you make people clean up after their dogs? And we say, oh, that's coyote. So wow, yeah. that's really scary. Yeah. So if one gets close to us, how can we protect ourselves? Oh, it's pretty easy. Coyotes are, uh, they respond well to alpha behavior. So what you need to do is own your space and that's actually pretty easy to do. If you, if you can just raise your voice, put your arms up over your head, stand very clearly and yell at them. Go away, get away, go away. Wow. Leave me alone, arms up over your head, mean it. Don't just oh, go yeah. away. You need to mean <laughs> it and you need to own it. And if they stand there and stare at you, that's not uncommon for an urban coyote because they're sort of... Even if you're screaming at them? Like, get might, out of here! They might, so you need to do it again. If you okay. get that sort of, what? <laughs> you talking to me? <laughs> you talking to me? You need to do it again because okay. you just need to reinforce. And even for me, if I have a coyote who's particularly just sort of... Huh? <laughs> then I will take a couple runs at it. I'll oh, actually, you're tough. No, no, no. This is you just they make two or three steps towards it. Go again. Get out of here. And they they, they respond. leave. Yeah. Do they normally travel in packs, or is it just going to be one or two? So again, there's two different kinds of coyotes. There's transient coyotes that are loners. Um, we see those, but also there are coyotes that are social and live in a family group. And so okay. you may see up to two or three or four coyotes all together, Ooh. particularly in the wintertime if they're out on a hunting expedition or something like that. That takes a lot of guts to get out there and go, get out! <laughs> I know. But you got to own it. If you don't prove to them you're the alpha, yeah. 
they'll work that. Oh, wow, They're smart wow, animals. wow, wow. <laughs> okay, so how can we tell? I know we have some photographs sure. here about footprints, if sure. this is a coyote's footprint. Sure, we get this call a lot. Did a coyote walk through my backyard? This picture we're looking at here is a coyote track. So it's a very egg-shaped track. It's lighter in the snow. The top two claws are showing, but the side claws are not. Mm. And so also, as a coyote moves through a field, it's going to look like it's a two-legged animal rather than a one-legged animal. They leave this sort of single row of tracks. It's very interesting. Wow. Okay. So we can compare now to a domestic dog. Let's look at that picture. Uh, and I want to show you that. This one, again, I took both of these pictures at uh, Crown Hill Park. So here you can see how different a domestic dog track looks. Right. It's much rounder. If you can see that difference, it's very heavy. Um, each claw is showing. All four of the claws are showing as opposed to just the top two. And again, domestic dogs, because they don't have to worry about where their next meal is coming from, right. they tend to have this really random gait where they're just all over. <laughs> and so it's, it's actually when you look at the whole trackway, and then when you look at an individual track, like I just showed you, yeah. it's actually pretty easy to tell the two apart. Well, thank you so much for all these valuable yeah. tips. That yeah. was great. If you'd like more tips and information about coyotes from Ranger Marianne Bunnell, go online to jeffco.us slash parks. You can also follow her on Twitter at jcosranger1. Stay safe and plan your next outdoor adventure with the help of Jefferson County Open Space.